Good evening. My name is uh, Sub, and I'm going to talk about navigation in an app of apps. Um, now this is an interesting title, uh, but before that, I need to make yourself uh, familiar with what is an app of apps and what specifically we need to do uh, for navigation in app of apps. A little bit of intro about me. I work as a principal software engineer at SP Digital. Um, besides working for a few of the leading product companies in the past, I also um, contribute a lot to this community. And one way or other, if you are attending this meetup, you are associated with this community, either through iOS Dev Scout or iOS Confessy. So thank you for being a part of this community. So in the last couple of years, I have been part of uh, three refactor, three major refactor. So in PayPal, I was part of a team that uh, refactored the uh, PayPal app from Objective C to Swift. Then when I joined SP in 2016, the previous version of the SP app was built in Cordova, Sinchadaj, and I decided this is the first thing I need to change. So I and my team, basically, we uh, built a native Swift app. And last year, we tried to build something uh, different. So it's basically, we did a, another refactor uh, where we had uh, made this app, which is capable of having other apps inside the app. So some they call it super app, I didn't use that word. But the concept is not new. Uh, WeChat has been doing it uh, for a few years. Um, and similarly, there are various other apps in the region, like uh, Gojek uh, is doing it, PTM is doing it in India. And uh, recently we started with SPR, primarily because we introduced other services other than utilities, which is EV is uh, one of them. And we have uh, other, other services, uh, which are basically mini apps within the app. Now, since we are in Grab, so you might be wondering, is Grab and uh, falls into that, into that category? Um, yes and no. That is primarily because uh, Grab tackles it in, in a different way. Um, they have multiple apps basically to, to tackle this scenario. So for example, Grab 4, Grab Shuttle. So there are multiple apps to um, you know, um, tackle this uh, scenario. So when you build an app that has other apps inside it, there are primarily two main things you need to consider. Uh, one is networking, and other one is navigation. There are obviously various other things that you need to uh, take care of, but these are the primary, primary two things. And today I'm going to talk about uh, navigation. The concept of navigation and navigators are not new. And we have seen this guy. Where is Anyone who doesn't know who this is? <laughs> so, uh, especially he's from the Pirate of Caribbean movie, he's Captain Jack Sparrow. And this is his team. So, when they navigate the ship, who basically coordinates? Is it the crew who coordinates or is it the captain who coordinates? Obviously, the captain does. Right? So I'll come to Captain later, but I'm going to show you a basic, simple scenario and uh, how we are going to introduce this concept here. So this is a food discovery app. Let's say you have this fantastic idea and you want to help tourists uh, who are coming to Singapore to discover popular foods in Singapore. And you can have food details, then you can find restaurants who, where they can find uh, this food. Right, let's see how we will build um, such an app. Basically, three simple screens. There's a food list page, there's a food details page, and there's a rest restaurant list page. And this is the first iteration of this app. I basically, use Segway all the way through, uh, 3D control, um, three Segways. And you can do it either through storyboard or you can uh, use code. If you are someone like Veena, who is sitting there, who just introduced uh, me and the other speakers earlier, she doesn't like storyboard. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so, if you are somebody like Veena, maybe you, you don't like storyboard. But if you like storyboard, you, you want to use Segway. Basically, there are two things you need to uh, think about uh, prepare for Segway and perform Segway, right? 
and you need to if you want to do it from code then basically you need to initialize the view controller and then you need to push or present that view controller pretty simple right now let's imagine a different scenario this is your initial scenario now you notice that your application is doing really well and your product owner comes and say hey um, you know we are getting a lot of interest in the restaurants so let's uh, build this screen which is basically just adding one more screen to the top which is like food list then from the first page you can go to the restaurant list page now irrespective of what you use whether storyboard or code just imagine how you will you will solve this problem Now let's say you have to deal with something else on top of that. As and when the complexity grows, imagine how your code is going to look like and how your view controllers will behave. So there are some problems with the traditional or conventional approach, right? You basically have your code snippets all over the place. Nobody owns the responsibility of the navigation. your view controllers know too much details about other view controllers it's like if you are a parent view controller you and you you know too much details about the child view controller and so on so and so on and imagine you are initialing the same view controller multiple times and you have to change the signature you have to change the method you have to basically modify it everywhere and quickly it can become unmaintainable So the solution is let the captain take care of it. So this is this is one approach. You might be using it all in traditionally in your network manager. Let's say your application might be having a network manager to take net take care of all network requests. So you basically have a navigation manager or navigation coordinator who which will take care of all the navigation in your application. Now you might be wondering why this is important. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you want to go on a vacation with your partner to Paris. Will you do it yourself or will you go to an agent? Who is going to choose option A? So there are quite a few who will choose to do it yourself, right? Obviously because it's fun. It's going to give you more experience, right? Imagine you have to take 50 people with you because you're going to have a Marriage in Paris, and you are taking 50 friends with you. Are you still going to go ahead with option A? <laughs> <laughs> What if you need to still take more people, like 200 people, 300 people? Now you don't need to answer me. As and when the complexity increases, your answer will tend towards option B. Basically, let somebody else take care of it, because option A, doing it yourself. increases the complexity of it so coming back to solution basically we need somebody to coordinate the navigation for us so there are there two great talks and article by this uh, samar panal she gave a talk in ios com 2017 i think uh, and she talked about coordinated pattern and there is a, an article by paul hersen uh, both of them they introduce how you will create a coordinator pattern yourself for this particular talk i'm going to talk about a library which helps you do that so the library is url navigator basically you need to do three things define your url pattern map your view controllers to the url handlers then you push present or open the url So in this case, define your URL pattern. So thinking about the food application, there's a food list screen, food detail screen, and a restaurant list screen. So all the URLs are basically um, represented by an enum. Then you need to map them to a view controller. So you will have basically a shared navigator in your entire application. The entire application will have one navigator, 
and then you need to map your view controllers to those routes that you just saw. And let's say you want to pass additional parameters, then you can uh, pass using uh, something called context. So I'll come to the context in a while. Then your own view controller will have a special uh, method um, where it can uh, return the view controller or a navigation view controller, whatever you want. You can use storyboard for this. You can just initialize uh, without using storyboard. Basically, this is a uh, init method that will uh, help you initialize the view controller. And when you need to just navigate to a view controller, post, present, or transition anyway, this is the only line you need to write. So in your view controllers, you do not need to know too much details about other view controllers. You are not initializing other view controllers yourself. The navigator is going to initialize for you. So there are a few other um, you know, advantages that it has. Basically, it hides unnecessary details that you don't need to know within the view controller. But because we are using URL schemes or URLs for initializing our view controller, it gives us a lot more advantage than this. Let's see what it can help us do. So here is a representation how I can just visit an URL and go to specific view controller within my application. That is, you can use this, let's say you post on Facebook, post on uh, Twitter, send somebody an SMS, or simply pass somebody an URL. The person can not only come to your application, but go to specific page in your application. This is one example. Second example, if you have used the force touch in iOS or the 3D touch, you can basically go to specific page again just by using the URL. Third use case, if you have today extensions or any other type of extensions, you can again go to specific page using uh, just URL schemes. Now all of this is super easy and super uh, convenient because you use something or you created a navigator, um, basically a functionality which uses URL schemes to navigate to specific view controllers. Now let me show you a quick demo. Controller. 
So this is the example where uh, it's basically the home shortcut or 3D touch example. Again, I'm using the same route here. If you see, I have uh, two uh, options. One is food list, another one is restaurant list. I'm basically passing the same route here. Same with today view controller. I have basically two buttons, and all I'm doing is basically passing the same route. Now, as you can see, it's going to be um, going to make it super easy to manage your navigation using this method. That's the end of my presentation, and if you have any questions, you can ask me. Yes. Just a sound question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I saw you use uh, enums for the URLs, right? So in that case, why why can't we just use like just the enums without the URLs? Because like. Uh, you can just do a switch of the URLs uh, of, of the enums, uh, of the enum cases, and in terms of the context, then we can just put parameters in those enum cases. Right? Possible, very possible. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing how the URL navigator would be more useful than, you know, not using it. You know, I could just use the normal enum cases. So what the URL navigator does is basically uh, it does three things. One is it takes care of the navigation part. One, one, the first part is you are defining the URLs. So if you you are saying that you can define using um, it's basically uh, instead of string you can just create your own URLs, right? Um, and then the second part is mapping the view controllers with uh, the the URLs, and the third part is. Um, Presenting or quizzing. So if you do all three yourself, yes, you don't need to use URL navigator. So I, I was just wondering why they decided to put URLs in the library in the first place. Why why don't they just use like enum navigator? Because it seems to me that the URLs uh, they don't do anything special aside from just making it maybe compatible with deep things that, that I can see. But I don't yes, deep linking is one of the main advantages. So. It is going to help you uh, a lot when you need to, let's say, manage push notifications and you need to deep link to specific pages. Mm -hmm. And this is one use case I can think of, and the other use cases uh, that I sold. So if you don't use something like URL Navigator and you need to basically manage that deep linking yourself. So if you are willing to do that, yes, you don't need to use this third party library. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot. Um, I would suggest you to take a look at uh, Samar Panas video. She uh, recommended another way where you can create this all by yourself without using URL Navigator. Um, so that will be a good place to look at uh, things here. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Yes? Uh, yeah, I got one. Um, <clears throat> so here, like the Navigator um, manage all the all the view controllers, right? Um, what happens like if you do dependent dependent injection? Like that means you're gonna add more and more context, and like navigator has to keep like its services, the view model, any kind of like objects to be able to inject it when you're gonna build it. Um, how how do you manage dependent injection with with this library? Um, give me a, give me an example. Um, Let's say your restaurant list, mm -hmm. you need like a restaurant service, uh, maybe like different kind of other dependencies to make it work. And to keep like the view clean, you don't keep preference into it. So you're gonna inject it when you're gonna... Like, so uh, the only thing the navigator is doing is just creating simple view controller. Your view controller still manages its own view model, its own preferences. Those are not being managed by the URL navigator. So you continue to do how you will be building your view controller as it is. 
the only thing you need to pass while initializing your view controller is just, just the navigator. You don't need to pass anything else. If you want to use um, a view model, if you want to use a delegate for whatever things that you're doing, you are free to do, do so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I think that's my question. Yeah. Like, how do you manage dependency injection with the navigator? So you want to pass a delegate or you want to pass a view model? Any, any kind of dependency. So you can pass in the context if you want. Okay. Yeah. So the signature of the context is basically, uh, if you see, Pass a struct. Uh, you can literally pass any object you want as a context. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All right. If not, I just have one announcement to make on behalf of my friends at PayPal. Um, they are looking for iOS engineers. Uh, well, I don't work in PayPal anymore, uh, but. Uh, if you're interested, then you can uh, either apply uh, through LinkedIn or you can find me later and then I can make an intro. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much.